I feel like everyone and their mother knows these books. Um, in my opinion, you don't have to read Shadow and Bow in order to read these books. I would recommend that you actually just read these books and don't read the original trilogy. You can watch the TV show if you want. We're all here for the couples. Let's be honest. We're all here for the characters. We're all here for the couples. It's been a while since I actually like did do a little reread of it. I have these little highlighters, newly acquired highlighters. So I'm gonna use those. I'm gonna start. My roommate just left. It's an empty house. I wanna make sure my dogs aren't out for free. Flashback to grade, I don't know actually, grade 9, 10, 11, I forget. When this book came out and I read it, the entire thing. I think I stayed up until like 3 a.m. or something in one night. This is so beautiful. Can we just talk about this? I know that some people use like tabs in different colors for like different things. Should I do it by couple? Or I could do one for, I don't really know, favorite moments, favorite quotes. Oh my gosh, there's so many options. Okay, I definitely need to have one just for Kanej. Normally, I annotate books for a person and then I'll write a letter to them, but since that isn't the case for this time, I think I'm going to choose my favorite quote. Dogs are all over the place. So. Also, I'm wearing pants. They're just shorts. Okay, there we go. Those are the dogs. Actually, I really like this quote, so when it comes up, I'm going to evaporate. Anyway, part one, shadow business. Oh my gosh, I forgot that. And it always starts in the point of view of some random character. Joust. Let's talk about the best introduction to a character. It's the first chapter that we get from one of the crows' point of view, and it's from Inesh's point of view, and it's Kaz's description. I know we literally just got started, but I could literally write an essay about why this was the perfect, perfect, best decision ever. It says Kaz Brecker didn't need a reason. This is so iconic. Are you Josh? What they call dirty hands didn't need a reason any more than he needed permission to break a leg, to sever an alliance, or change a man's fortune with the turn of a card. Of course they were wrong. Kaz always had his reasons. Best character introduction I've ever read. Not even finished this chapter, but we found our first no mourners, no funerals. Among them, it passed for good luck. We have our first interaction here. Kaz's eyes found Inej unerringly in the crowd. His voice had a rough, abraded texture of stone against stone. Inej always wondered if he'd sounded that way as a little boy, if he'd ever been a little boy. So begins the descent to uncovering Kaz R. If you know, you know. Actually, I decided to add a new color. I'm adding yellow for highlights about Inej and her backstory story because she is also one of my favorite characters just like on her own like it's not the impression olympics out here because they have all been done so dirty but like let's be honest what's <laughs> the impression olympics like Anaj, young woman of color, like being sold. She joined up with the drags less than two years ago, just days after her 15th birthday. 15! So period, all I did was write Inez, she deserves the world. And anyone who hates Inez hates Sunny. Oh my gosh, look, it says Cass had done his best to teach her, but she didn't quite have his way with breaking and entering. And it took her a few tries to finesse the lock. Cass taught her how to pick locks. I said, Lee, give us the scene of him teaching her or else. Guys, the worst part about this entire book is their ages. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. 17? There's no chance. Oh, and here's the reveal. Big Bolliger, is that what his name is? The little snake. Okay, yup, period. He knew Inej was shadowing him. He is the only one who always knows when she is or isn't there. Soulmates? Usually he liked the quiet. In fact, he would have happily sewn most people's lips shut. But when she wanted to, Inej had a way of making you feel her silence. When everyone knows you're a monster, you needn't waste time doing every monstrous thing. Inej still believes her Suli saints were watching over her. Kaz knew it and for some reason he loved to rile her. He wished he could read her expression now. There was always something so satisfying about the little furrow between her black brows. It had been a gut decision to pay off her indenture, but Inej was one of the best investments Kaz had ever made. Not the investment talk. Oh, I forgot that this is the part where Kaz gets jumped. I actually think this is the most underrated Kanej moment ever. It's when she's waiting for him. It's like after she had to like get rid of that dealer, Rojak or whatever his name was. And then just as he passes by her, he says, Rojak, gone, she said. He put up much of a fight, nothing I couldn't handle. And then he says, not what I asked. As soon as I read that, when I was reading this book, on page 64, when I was first reading this book, I was like, it's over, it's done. This is like my favorite couple of all time. So good, Lee Bardugo. Lee Bardugo. Okay, this next scene when they're talking, like in his office or like his room or whatever, is literally one of my favorite scenes of all time. <laughs> So excited. My pink highlighter. Boy Scout is always ready. He calls her my little Suli idealist. An impossible job, near certain death, terrible odds, period. He grinned at her, his smile sudden and jarring as a thunderclap. His eyes the near black of bitter coffee. We'll be kings and queens, Inej. Kings and queens. Pretending to examine one of her knives, determined to ignore that grin. This is literally one of the best scenes of all time. Can I just say that? Kaz was not a giddy boy smiling and making future plans with her. He was a dangerous player who was always working an angle. 
always, she reminded herself firmly. Kept her eyes averted, shuffling a stack of papers into a pile on the desk as Cass stripped out of his vest and shirt. She wasn't sure if she was flattered or insulted that he didn't seem to give a second thought to her presence. I'm literally highlighting this entire page. It was his hands that drew her attention as he shucked off his leather gloves and dipped a cloth in the wash basin. Only ever removed them in these chambers and as far as she knew, only in front of her. As he ran the wet cloth under his arms and the hard planes of his chest, water trickling down his torso. For saint's sake, Inez thought as her cheeks heated. Yeah, that girl's whipped. Look at this page. It is <laughs> it's literally just pink highlights. And then Inez is shocked when he says he got jumped and then he promises her it won't happen again. And then obviously the iconic, please my darling Inez, treasure of my heart, won't you do me the honor of acquiring me a new hat? Brick by brick. Iconic. I think that all these little flashback scenes are so underrated. Like when he's remembering, has remembered when Inej had first seen the jackal mask. Fate that took you from your family and stuck you in a pleasure house in Ketterdam, or was it just very bad luck? What? <laughs> Why would you say that? I'm not sure yet, she said coldly. In moments like that, he thought she might hate him. Yeah, because let's be honest, Inej is too good for that boy. But that's honestly part of it. We had a little flashback to how Nina first joined the drags. It was Inej that first came to her with the proposal from Kaz. Kaz had sent the right person to argue his case, a Suli girl just a few months younger than Nina who had grown up in Ravka and who had spent a very ugly year indentured at the menagerie. And that was like the start of their little friendship is that Nina had trusted Inej and she hadn't been sorry for it. That's so cute. I literally love their friendship it's again one of my favorite things about the book that i think is underrated and it's unfortunately not in the show obviously they changed the origin story for like how nina joined the dregs in the show i really like the story i wish they had kind of kept to it anyway they're breaking matthias out okay currently debating whether or not i choose a different whole highlighter color just for nina and matthias nina remembered the first time she'd seen matthias his beauty had seemed unfair to her in another life she might have believed he was coming to rescue her yeah that's so sad he had hold of her shoulders and had pinned her to the ground nina he growled and his hands closed over her throat oh my i literally remember so clearly when i first read that like the first time that i read this book and i was like <laughs> i was like what now for the next part part two servant and lover the iconic opening line matthias was dreaming again dreaming of her i'm literally gonna cry we finally have violin here jan venek's son and our guarantee on 30 million kruga finally all of our crows are together it's the next day even though i look exactly the same um but i also just wanted to come here and say that even though this is, has no relevance to any of you guys watching probably but I got accepted to my top choice grad school, so I'm very excited about that. I'm in a, a bit of a good mood today. Okay, I think it's like 10 p.m. now and I finally just finished all my stuff. Wow, I literally forgot about my favorite quote about love of all time, pretty much. Many boys will bring you flowers, but someday you'll meet a boy who will learn your favorite flower, your favorite song, your favorite sweet. And even if he's too poor to give you any of them, it won't matter because he will have taken the time to know you as no one else does. Only that boy earns your heart. And then I wrote, definitely it doesn't sound like Kaz, but by the end, Inez sees the promise of a good man and he knows her like no one else does. Also, I just realized like it really is young Kaz, like Kaz Reitfeld, who is like in love with Inez. And he says like, even if he's too poor to give you any of the flowers, like it doesn't matter because he will have taken the time to like know what it is. Oh my God. But then it's immediately followed by the most heart-wrenching thing ever. There have been no boys to bring her flowers, only men with stacks of Kruga and purses full of coin. And then she says, just this minute, I'll settle for an apology. And I won't board the boat with that one. Even if Kaz isn't sorry, he can pretend. I I really didn't catch that until now. And she's injured and they're on the harbor and then with her like passing out breath, she says to Kaz like, say you're sorry. And he's like, what for? And she's like, just say it. That is why. And I forgot about this line that I love where she sees Kaz and it says, he looked like a dock worker or a boy setting sail on his first adventure. It was almost as if she were peering through a lens at some other more pleasant reality. <laughs> No, please. This is not a drill. Inej has been stabbed. This is when Kaz is gonna come rescue her. He said, not just yet, Inej. Oh my gosh. When he says, keep talking, Wraith, don't slip away from me. He clutched her tighter. Just make it to the schooner. Schooner? Schooner? Is that what the boat's called? Open your damn eyes, Inej. Period. Remember the first time she'd seen him at the menagerie? One night, as he passed her in the parlor, she'd done a foolish thing, a reckless thing. I can help you, she'd whispered. Oh, my favorite thing ever. Talk to me, Wraith. You came back for me. I protect my investments. Now she remembered. He owed her an apology. Say you're sorry. For what? Just say it. It's the line. I don't know why I like that line so much. And then we're gonna start their time on the boat, which is low-key one of my favorite parts of this entire book. Oh, and it's the way that he pushes past everyone and doesn't let anyone touch Inej when she gets onto the boat and just takes her straight to Nina. Let's not move past this where he's like literally on a rampage and then gently Kaz places Inej on the table. Um, Kaz knew death. He could feel its presence on the ship now looming over them ready to take his wraith. This is like the moment where he finally has like a reality check of like, oh, 
oh crap like of like oh my gosh wait and now she might actually die and like previously he had just been taking her for granted this entire time but now it's like a reality check of like oh and he's not taking her for granted anymore i think that this really flipped the switch thank you for listening to my ted talk um and then of course we have that entire scene of him literally torturing and gouging the eye out of the dude that stabbed anesh giving tetra and i kill you trope. Uh, i actually don't really like that trope um because i don't like overprotective men over women because i'm like just relax i honestly think that the kaz and anesh version of it is probably like the most acceptable one for me but i'm still not the biggest fan i don't really go crazy over it like the rest of book talk does but like no woman like needs a man you know what i mean i am nina and nina is me nina thought of the look on his face when he set a nudge down on the table he was the same cast cold rude impossible but beneath all that anger she thought she'd seen something else too or maybe she was just a romantic nina gets it you know what is so underrated that i'm getting a new appreciation for it looking at kaz and Inej through the povs of the other crows out of all people matthias's chapter my favorite aryan man first of all the second that nina comes onto the deck kaz is immediately like who's watching Inej? that's my man and something savage flashed in his eyes matthias suspected that brecker would drag the girl back from hell himself if he had to that's coming from matthias everyone knows like something about this girl is different part three Heart sick. Inej has finally woken up only to see that Kaz literally killed every single person who went after Inej. And then Inej just says, well, I'm a very valuable investment. Tell me you didn't say that. Of course you did. Well, not the valuable part. Idiot. Just two women who are too good for any of the men, period. Can I just say, I'm sure that I said this before, I would literally give it all up for Lee Bardugo to give us a novella about like the early days Kaz and Inej, like when they first met, first training together. Oh my, make it a money grab. I'm grabbing for it. I'll be grabbing for it with every penny that I own. That is such a smart idea. Like I don't know who I need to talk to on her marketing team, freaking publishing team or something. That's literally the best idea ever. Cause she's with Nina right now telling the story about like how she got like her menagerie tattoo removed. Basically like, Nina asked why she never got the dregs tattoo. Kaz told me he said it was my choice and he wouldn't be the one to mark me again but he had in his own way despite her best intentions feeling anything for Kaz Brecker was the worst kind of foolishness worst kind of foolishness she said it says Kaz had taught her to crack a safe pick a pocket and wheel a knife he'd gifted her with her first blade the one she called Stanked Peter I want to see that story like please here it is the best chapter of all time Kaz's point of view after Inej finally emerges from her injury I remember so clearly like the feelings that I felt when I read this chapter for the first time nothing will ever recreate it oh my god I'm gonna read it to you all like a bedtime story so gather around this highlighter this pink one is gonna run out by the time that i finish this book it took two days after she emerged from the surgeon's cabin for Kaz to make himself approach Inej oh my gosh he's so awkward you know i can do it Kaz, and you know i'm not gonna refuse so why ask and then the game changer right here because i've been looking for an excuse to talk to you for two days like suddenly this man is like so up in his feels like i swear to god like her close call with death really it really got him together. He says, I'll get us out. You know that. Tell me you know that. He needed her to say it. Yeah. Needed to know she believed in him. And that's the last time you're ever going to do Inej dirty, let me tell you. Oh my gosh, I forgot that this is the scene where we first get the reveal. Pekka Rollins killed my brother. Oh my gosh, like this is how you like actually put chemistry on a page. Professor Bardugo really figured it out. He turned his head. They were sitting close together, their shoulders nearly touching. Literally look at what I put onto this page. Even the idea of being this near someone should have set his skin crawling. Instead, he thought, what happens if I move closer? He says, I don't want your prayers. And she says, what do you want them? The old answers came easily to mind. Money, vengeance, Jordy's voice in my head, silence forever. But a different reply roared to life inside him, loud, insistent, and unwelcome. Yeah, you called it. You, Anesh, you. How are we all gonna sit here and not just talk about how that was a literal cultural reset? Literature reset. Like, if that's not how every romance couple is written, then I don't want it. Wait, this is so cute. It said he was used to having his wraith around, feeding the crows outside his window, sharpening her knives while he worked at his desk, chastising him with her silly proverb. That's so cute. That's so cute that they would just like spend their days doing that like low-key their besties like <laughs> Okay guys happy to report a couple of days and two finished research thesis posters later I'm, back. I'm literally gonna spend the rest of the day. It's 7 p.m. Now I've decided that instead of catching up on six weeks worth of lectures for an exam that I have next week I'm gonna finish reading the rest of six of crows for you guys Yes <laughs>
I forgot that we left off in the chapter that is like unveiling the entire Kaz Jordy backstory. Finally, we're getting the Nina Matthias backstory. I forgot this was like the first thing that she says, wake up you miserable lump of muscle. Let me tell you that if there's one thing that this show did right, it's get this scene correct. Like the Nina Matthias shipwreck scene. Cause they literally took the dialogue word for word. It's not natural for someone to be as stupid as he is tall. And yet there you stand. You're cold and clammy. It's like lying next to a burly squid. And then the ending part when he says he lied, he did like the way she talked. And then the scene where it's like, I do like you. Oh, I see. I'm a wicked Grisha seductress. I have beguiled you with my Grisha wild. Oh, it's the scene I've been waiting for. I have my pink highlighter already. The prisoner carriage scene. Look, he opens the gates. He literally freezes. Kaz Brecker flinched. Instead of being seated and chained to the benches, they were standing pressed up against each other. And it's because of his trauma that he is moving too slowly and he can't like put the hinges on the door. What was wrong with him and why had he frozen at the wagon door? Something had made him hesitate, but what? He keeps dropping his lock picks. Now there is Safe, but despite the rattle of the wagon's wheels, Inej could tell Kaz's breathing had gotten worse. I don't know why. Hello. Shallow, rapid pants like an animal caught in a trap. It was a sound she never thought to hear from him. Oh my god, this is the best ending to a chapter I've ever read. She knew the exact moment when Kaz Brecker, the bastard of the barrel and the deadliest boy in Ketterdam, fainted. That's generally one of my favorite ending sentences to a chapter, like, ever. <gasps> I literally forgot that he had to use Jordy's dead, like swollen, disgusting body. Literally use it as a flutter board to get back to shore. Yeah. Oh, and then of course Inej's voice in the in like the carriage is the one to like wake him up and like pull him out of his nightmare. On the cramped confines of the wagon, she managed to give him space. His heart was pounding. Keep talking, he rasped. What? Just keep talking. I love that. That mirrors like the thing before of like, what did she say? She's like, oh, say sorry. And he's like, for what? And she's like, just say it. Oh my God, this gave me so much nostalgia to like when I first read this book because I remember reading this and just like absolutely losing my mind. Not like I'm not losing it right now, but he hated that Inej had seen him this way that anyone had. On the heels of that thought came another. Better it should be her. I just love like all of this character development that we see from him because that was his first thought, but like now his second thought is changing. <laughs> Leave our Dugo. Okay, now we're at the scene where they all have to be butt naked now. Inej had once offered to teach him how to fall. Trick is not getting knocked down, he told her with a laugh. No, Kaz, she said. The trick isn't getting back up. Like, where's that scene? Like, I made that scene yesterday. More silly platitudes, but somehow even the memory of her voice helped. And then it says he was better than this. He had to be. He brought these people here, but then he has an extra sentence just for Inej. Oh my god, Inej is in the goddamn incinerator shop. When she's climbing this incinerator, like anytime that we're at those scenes, like I've never had more anxiety reading it in my entire life. Like if you know, you know. Get Kaz's gloves from the laundry bin and then she puts them on. A little Kanej, like little gem. Felt curiously guilty as she slid the supple black leather over her hands as if she'd crept into his room without his permission. I like the symbolism in that. It's just spreading the Kanej agenda. Well, there was no time to acclimate herself to the oversized field of gloves how cute <laughs> i like this ending part where she's just getting like spiteful there's no one to save her no cast to come to her rescue no net waiting to break her fall only the fire ready to claim her she captured herself up another foot Kaz brought us here and then another wasn't sorry she was just mad mad at Kaz for attempting this insane job because despite all good sense and better intentions she let herself feel something for the bastard of the barrel like i think that's our first like confession from her pov Eating that up. Oh my gosh, I just remember now reading this part. If it were a trick, I promise you safety. I promise you happiness. I don't know if that exists in the barrel, but you'll find none of it with me. Better terrible truths than kind lies, which I feel like is the overarching theme that we see in the relationship. Truth was she tried to sneak up on Kaz plenty of times since then, but she never managed it. It was as if once Kaz had seen her, he'd understood how to keep seeing her. That's not the most soulliest soulmate thing I've ever heard in my life. Wait, okay, well, first of all, I didn't know how dark it got. But, oh my god, look at the sky. Next part, the ice does not forgive. Wait, why is this part making me kind of emotional where they're like at their last parting? And yet they hesitated, the knowledge that they might never see each other again, that some of them, maybe all of them, might not survive this night hung heavy in the air. Gambler, a convict, a wayward son, a lost Grisha, a Suli girl who had become a killer, a boy from the barrel who had become something worse. What bound them together? Greed? Desperation? Was it just the knowledge that if one or all of them disappeared tonight no one would come looking inej's mother and father might still shed tears for the daughter they'd lost but if inej died tonight there would be no one to grieve for the girl she was now she had no family no parents or siblings or anyone only people to fight beside maybe that was something to be grateful for too oh my god it's happening when we get back to ketterdam i'm taking my share and i'm leaving the drag says it was time to go saint speed kaz kaz snagged her wrist <gasps> Snagged her wrist. Gloved thumb moved over her pulse. Traced the top of her feather tattoo. You don't make it out. I want you to know 
dot dot dot. She waited. She felt hope rustling its wings inside her, ready to take flight at the right words from Kat. She willed that hope into stillness. Please. Oh my, and this is the part that changed the game. She reached up and touched his cheek. Oh my gosh, the amount of times that I've actually read this passage is <laughs> embarrassed. Quite frankly, it's embarrassing. She thought he might flinch again, even knock her hand away. In nearly two years of battling side by side with Kaz, of late night scheming, this was the first time she had touched him skin to skin. She let her hand cup his cheek, but she saw a tremor pass through him as if he were waging a war with himself ah! okay she could see it took every last bit of his terrible will for him to remain still beneath her touch <laughs> he's literally fighting so hard and you can tell and yet he did not pull away she knew it was the best he could offer it was not enough well, let's just talk about how that is the game changer that it was not enough like Inej finally taking a stand for what she thinks she deserves and being like I deserve more than that like that's not enough period she dropped her hand he took a breath I just have so many feelings I have so many feelings you know how like every time you reread a book something like different hits well I just found a new one for six of crows 14 he had dropped down from a rooftop and then broken his leg and then never set right and then he limped and then he had a fabricator make his cane for him and then it says it become a declaration and then this is the line that really is getting me right now i don't know why it kind of made me a little bit emotional and there was no part of him that was not stronger for having been broken i it i underlined it and i literally wrote like i really really like this i really like that I really like that line. Okay, but on the heels of that, let's talk about the most important line in this entire book. All of them are literally naked and afraid, drowning. Kaz always has to be like on the brink of death or something in order to like get it together. And he's literally having flashbacks to Nesh. The first time he'd seen Nesh at the menagerie in purple silk, her eyes lined with coal. The sobs that had come from behind the door of her room at the slot the night she made her first kill. The sobs he'd ignored. Kaz remembered her perch on the sill of his attic window sometime during that first year after he'd brought her into the drug. She'd been feeding the crows that congregated on the roof. He shouldn't make friends with crows, he told her. Why not, she asked. Oh my goodness. He'd looked up from his desk to answer, but whatever he'd been about to say had vanished on his it was literally from the first year oh my gosh i don't know why this is like such a revelation to me when i've literally read this book probably like six seven times at least the first year he was in love with this girl since her f wow the sun was out for once and Inej had turned her face to it her eyes were shut her oil black lashes fanned over her cheeks for a moment kaz was a boy again sure that there was magic in the world that is one of my favorite quotes ever i know that i say that every single quote in this book is like my favorite quote ever but can i just say that this really takes the case where it says she laughed and if he could have bottled the sound and gotten drunk on it every night he would have i feel like that's the bare min like if someone's not saying that to you like do they even love you you know what i mean she had to have made it out of the ice court and if she had it then he had to live to rescue her like are you that is sickening ache in his lungs was unbearable he needed to tell her dot 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 what she was lovely and brave and better than anything he deserved he was twisted crooked wrong but not so broken that he couldn't pull himself together into some semblance of a man for her without meaning to he had begun to lean on her to look for her to need her near he needed to thank her for his new hat have you guys all seen that tiktok of um of i forget what his name is freddy i always want to say freddy krueger and that's literally not it but the actor who plays Kaz, he like did some fan service for the entire world and he read that line because i think everyone was like making him read it everyone was like begging him and groveling at his feet to read it like in his voice and stuff and he did and it was actually so amazing like Lee Bardugo whoever your publishing team is like let me tell you all the money grab that would genuinely work so good a writing all those novellas about like the prequel Kaz and Inej stories like every single time they like refer to something and then also literally Six of Crows audiobook narrated by freaking that guy Freddie Carter not Freddy Krueger that'll be the biggest money grab ever and you know what it'll grab so much money proper thieves oh my god oh my gosh please i know this is not kaz and Inez related but like the part where nina takes the freaking what is that called the freaking jerda perem is so stressful to me oh welcome to another underrated scene from this book with sunny even though they're all underrated after nina takes that thing and all her grisha powers are amplified i wish you could see what i do and hear everybody on the ship which by the way if a man is not like doing this for you like don't settle girl i can hear the change in kaz's breathing when he looks at you it catches every time like he's never seen you before like what <laughs> what how can this woman write something like this and expect us all to be fine and just go about our lives knowing that we'll never have that like, mm, like what's up with that Nash turned to go kaz sees her hand keeping it on the railing stay he said stay in ketterdam 
stay with me. That's the famous line. We really love that, ladies. Just having men grovel. Only men grovel for women, period. And then she says, what would be the point? He took a breath. I want you to stay. I want you to dot, dot, dot. I want you. And how will you have me, Cavs? Fully clothed, gloves on, your head turned away so our lips can never touch. Maybe it was because his back was to her that she could finally speak the words. This is literally the best line of this entire book. I will have you without armor, Kaz Brecker, or I will not have you at all. Speak, she begged silently. Give me a reason to stay. For all his selfishness and cruelty, Kaz was still the boy who had saved her. She wanted to believe he was worth saving too. A final lap, everybody. So I'm sorry, this video was literally only about Kaz and Inej, but you guys know that that is literally all I needed from this book for comfort, so. And we all know how this book ends and the confrontation. I remember this is one of the best endings to a book I've ever read in my life. She really planted it, like, right from the beginning. And like, Leigh Bardugo, like, I would literally kiss every single, open mouth kiss every single one of your toes. Van Eck then says, kill everyone but Brecker. Kaz knew the instant he made his mistake. His eyes should have stayed on Van Eck. Instead, in that moment of threat, when he should have thought only at the fight. Who did he look at? He looked at Inej. And Manek saw it. He blew on his whistle, leave the others, get the money, and get the girl. Like, is that not the best ending to a confrontation? Like, I feel like it does such a good job of, like, subverting it. Like, no one... I really was not expecting that at all when I first read this book. And I was like, this is the best book ever. <laughs> ending scene. My favorite. I'm gonna get my money, Kaz vowed, and I'm gonna get my girl. Inej can never be his. Not really. But he would find a way to give her the freedom he'd promised her so long ago. Pretty hands had come to see the rough work done. The way that he says, my girl, like, what? I'm folding. That's it. I ate so good tonight. I really feasted tonight. Okay, well, thank you guys for following me along in my little rereading of Six of Crows, but it's actually only my favorite parts and only my favorite couple ever. Comment below if you're like that too, but I really, like I said, just wanted a comfort read, something that I knew would make me feel, oh my god, something that I knew would make me feel something, you know? Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already, and go follow me on my socials, they're all linked in the description, and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm gonna go to sleep now. Good fortune, Toby. No mourners. What? Okay, bye.